Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson, and this video is going to be Introduction to Eigenvalues and Eigenvectors. We'll start off with the definition. An eigenvector of an n by n matrix is a non-zero vector x such that this equation holds a times the vector x equals lambda times the vector x for some scalar value lambda, which we call the eigenvalue. So this means our x's are the eigenvectors, and lambda is the eigenvalue and lambda is just some scalar number. Let's take a look at an example. If I have the matrix A, which would be equal to 2, 0, 0, 3. So this is a 2 by 2 matrix, a square matrix. And I observe that this matrix times the vector 0, 4, I actually do this multiplication, I would get as a result the vector 0, 12. But what I can see is that this vector 0, 12 is really just 3 times my original vector. So in this way I could say for the matrix A, I have an eigenvalue of 3 and an eigenvector of 0, 4. And together these form an eigenpair. So because these two values satisfy this equation, this would be an eigenvalue and an eigenvector. Now, what does this look like graphically? Well, in general, if we have some vector, in this case I'll look at the vector 0, 4, this vector right here, and in general I can think of multiplication by a 2 by 2 matrix as a, some sort of transformation acting on this vector. And we've seen in the past that these transformations can represent um, shear transformations or shifts or rotations and all kinds of different transformations. But it turns out that this transformation on this vector has a special effect. It just takes our vector and it scales it. So the action on our vector x is essentially the same as just multiplying x by some number. And if we just take x and multiply it by some number, we're just scaling it. We're just stretching or shrinking it or flipping it. So here, I, if I multiply this vector, I get the vector 0, 12 as a result. So I'm really just stretching it by that factor of 3. This would be the new matrix Ax. Now if we look back at our numerical example, we can see that if I change my eigenvector to some other value, for instance if instead I looked at the vector 0, 5 into that multiplication, the resulting vector would be 0, 15. And 0, 15 I could write as 3 times the original vector 0, 5. So I can see that for the same eigenvalue, a different eigenvector would be the vector 0, 5. I can do the same thing with other vectors, 0, 6, 0, 7, 0, 8. All of those would be eigenvectors associated with this eigenvalue. So we have two key points. The first key point is that the effect of multiplying by the matrix A on our eigenvector is to just scale it by the value of lambda. The second key point is that for each eigenvalue, we can have multiple eigenvectors, and we will always have that. So how do we do some calculations here? All right, so let's take a look at a specific example. We have some matrix A, and our question is, is lambda equals 5 an eigenvalue of A? So let's see kind of algebraically how we could try to figure this out. We'll start with our original equation. Ax equals lambda x. This is really the equation that defines the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Now, what does this look like with our actual values? Well, we would have 3 minus 2. We'd have our matrix times some eigenvector, which we don't know the values yet, are equal to our eigenvalue, and I'll just write it as lambda for now, x1, x2. And so this is what this piece really looks like. So what I'd like to do is take this thing and put it into a form of a matrix equation that I've worked with before, maybe like some matrix times x equals some value. So really I'd like to consolidate these x's because then I should be able to work with this equation. So to do that, I'm going to subtract this piece over to the left-hand side. That would look like this. Notice the right-hand side is the zero vector, not just the value is zero. Now symbolically, if I looked at what that looked like, it would look like this. Just subtracting the lambda x to the right hand, to the left-hand side. Next thing I'm going to do is factor out that, that common vector in both terms. So if I look at the values here, if I factor out that x vector, it sort of looks like this. However, when I write it like this, I see I have a problem. 
I can't take a matrix subtracted by some scalar value. So to compensate for this, I'm going to put in the identity matrix. Now you can see that I haven't changed the actual value of the equation, because if I distributed my vector, I would get a times x over here, but then over here I would get lambda times identity times x, but x times identity is just the x vector. So I haven't really changed the value of the equation. Now what does this look like symbolically? It looks like this equation, a minus lambda times identity matrix, all that times the x vector equals zero. Now if I simplify this expression, if I take lambda times identity, it's really just a matrix whose diagonal entries are that eigenvalue. And then if I subtract these two matrices, because I only have numerical values on the diagonal, the result would look like my matrix with lambdas subtracted on the diagonals. So I would just be left with a matrix that looks like this. And so this is the matrix right here there really is this a minus lambda i piece. So we are going to work with this equation when trying to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And really, when you see that a minus lambda i, I want you to see this matrix, a matrix A with lambda subtracted on the diagonals. And so now, now we can go ahead and answer our original question. So if we look back at our original question, now I'm starting with this equation, a minus lambda i times my eigenvector equals zero. And now I'm going to plug in my specific value for lambda, a minus five times i times the eigenvector equals zero. And I actually were to write this out. Now I can see that this is really just solving a homogeneous matrix equation. So to do that, I would just take my matrix, remember this piece is just A, with subtracting that lam lambda value on the diagonals. So that's that matrix. And I'm just going to augment that with 0 and row reduce this. So my result in this case is I have negative 2, negative 2, 3, 3, still augmenting with 0, which I can choose to write or not write. And if I want, I can take that first row and divide by negative 2. And then if I want, I can take row 3 minus 3 times row 1. And the end result will be this system. So now that I've simplified this, I can really answer the question of is lambda equals 5 an eigenvalue. For lambda equals 5 to be an eigenvalue, I have to have non-zero solutions to this homogeneous equation. Because to find an associated eigenvector that's not equal to 0, there would have to be non trivial solutions. So because I row reduced and looked at my final system over here, I see there are free variables, I know there must be non-trivial solutions. So yes, lambda is an eigenvalue. If I had row reduced and found out that there was only the trivial solution, then I would know that lambda is not an eigenvalue. So now that we've determined that lambda is the eigenvalue, how could I find the associated eigenvector? Well, the eigenvector are just the solutions of this homogeneous equation. So I could write out my solutions. That last form tells me that I have the equation x1 plus x2 equals 0, and that x2 is a free variable. That means my eigenvector, the solutions of this homogeneous equation, would look like negative x2 and x2 for any value of x2. And if I factor out my value of x2, I can write it like this. So I can see any multiple of negative 1, 0 is an eigenvector for lambda equals 5. And so I'll write them as an eigenpair. I say when lambda equals 5, when that's my eigenvalue, the associated eigenvector is negative 1, 0. But also the solutions to a homogeneous equation would also be the null space. So that means the set of all these eigenvectors is really for, forming a vector space, and I will call that the eigenspace. And so when I say I found an eigenvector that's negative 1, 0, really I'm also finding a basis for this eigenspace. So to summarize, we've seen that we have the equation ax equals lambda x, and that defines our eigenvectors and eigenvalues. 
We've also seen that eigenvectors are solutions to the homogeneous equation a minus lambda i times x equals zero. So we did the algebra to show that that's that the solutions to this homogeneous equation are the eigenvectors. And lastly, we've talked about how the set of all eigenvectors forms a vector space, which we call the eigenspace. And that concludes this video. Thank you.